Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and we're out on a beautiful range today taking a look at a Vetterly rifle. This is, well, by all appearances and markings, this is a totally ordinary Vetterly, but what's cool about it is its specific provenance to the SS Grafton. Now, the Grafton is this cool little detail in Finnish history, actually pre-independent Finland, specifically in 1905. There was, as one might expect, some unrest among uh, Russian populations against the Tsar. Obviously this would uh, culminate in the Russian Revolution in 1917. But in 1905 the Russians were also at war with the Japanese, in the Russo-Japanese War, and the Japanese took an interest in this potential uh, revolutionary activity in Russia. There was a group of rebels who wanted to basically start a movement to overthrow the Tsar in St. Petersburg. And Japan thought this could be a really interesting opportunity to distract the Russians from the war effort. So the Japanese offered to essentially finance a shipment of arms into these rebels in St. Petersburg. And in the spring, spring-summer of uh, 1905, a a uh, Finnish, oh well, a Russian group, and at this time Finland was a province or a, a grand duchy of Russia. A uh, group organized purchase of about 15,000 Vetterly rifles and about two and a half million rounds of ammunition out of France. These were surplus, and 1905, 1860s, 1870s pattern Vetterlys are already pretty darn obsolete. They use a black powder rim fire cartridge, we're already well into the smokeless powder Spitzer bullet era. But this was available as relatively inexpensive surplus. So uh, they bought a ton of them out of France. They then also went and found a few thousand more here and there, uh, bought some guns out of Germany, a couple hundred C96 Mausers, uh, about 2,500 mostly Webley revolvers out of England, and in good to their word, the Japanese, through their military envoy in Stockholm, purchased a steamer, the SS Grafton, to ship all this stuff into St. Petersburg. Now the original plan was they were going to drop off 5,000 rifles and 500 pistols to armed, well, to become armed rebel groups in Helsinki, and, or in Finland, and then the rest of the guns would go to St. Petersburg. So the ship sets out, the Grafton, and the plan is to meet a pair of small ships that can help shuttle cargo off uh, and start unloading guns. And it all kind of goes foobar. There are problems in loading, there are problems in transit, and most importantly, the ships that are the smaller ships that are supposed to help offload the Grafton never show up at the rendezvous. So the Grafton gets there, hangs out for a brief time. Everyone's super paranoid, super nervous because of this cargo of illicit arms. And eventually, the Grafton turns around and goes back to Copenhagen where it had started. And they come up with a new plan. Forget it. We're just going to dump all of this stuff in Finland. And they set back off for there, and it goes fubar again because off the uh, off the coast, um, around Peter Sari, they start. <laughs> the ship comes up near shore. They start unloading. The ship runs aground. The Grafton runs aground. It's stranded, um, and again, everyone's super paranoid that the Russian gendarmes or, or the army are going to show up. They're going to find this. They're going to throw people in jail or execute people. And so they manage to offload a small amount, and then uh, they just blow up the ship. They've got some explosives on board as well for sabotage, and they say, "Forget it." We, this isn't working. They they scuttle the ship. They blow up the Grafton. Um, news gets out, of course, of what's happened. The Russian police do show up. The Russians end up uh, finding and taking into their possession about 5,000 guns. But some of them did get off the boat into Finland, and a lot of others remained on the Grafton when it sank. And for more than a few nights afterward, divers would show up. And this particular rifle, in fact, was recovered from the wreck of the Grafton by a diver. Diver hears about what's happening, he lives about 100 kilometers away, and he makes the trip over, um, goes out and recovers a number of rifles, including this one. These rifles were obsolete long before they ever got to Finland, and they were never put into military service. There was some very limited use, perhaps in the War of Independence, perhaps with the Civil Guard, but um, this was never marked uh, with a Civil Guard marking, a district number, or a Finnish army marking. The ammunition that was available for these rifles a little bit was brought in with the Grafton, but once that was gone it was very difficult to find new ammunition for them. It's a, an obsolete cartridge, it's an unusual cartridge that just wasn't available in Finland. 
frankly, hasn't been available in Finland ever since, and still isn't really available in Finland. Although we happen to have one box of original ammo from the period, which is really cool here. Um, so at any rate, these the Webley revolvers that were involved in this shipment were pretty much the same thing. Uh, they were of brief limited use until the ammunition supply ran out. Um, the C96 Mausers were a little bit more val more useful, and those, while they were purchased in concert with all of the Vetterlies and other guns, the C96s were actually shipped into Finland separately at a later date, and they all did make it in, and they saw some more significant use. These were pretty quickly relegated to civilian hunting rifles, and that is the provenance on this particular one. It came in with the Grafton, that's just known from the trail of ownership, uh, came up with a diver, went into civilian hands, uh, became a hunting rifle, and today is a very cool collectible piece of Finland's uh, early pre-independence history. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this this look into a, a rifle that at first glance wouldn't appear to be anything particularly significant. Thanks for watching.